Ship Shape TV is brought to you by Surehold. Clean and simple. Make sure to subscribe to be notified of the latest Ship Shape TV content. We did some horse trading last week when we were up in New York at Lighthouse Marine Distribution with Cleek Glasso. And what we have here, guys, is a set of four jack stands. We're going to be using them today in the program. And good deal, you made it. Hi, I'm John Graviscus. This is Brian Farrell. It's great to have you back in our television studios here in Jupiter, Florida. And Brian, we have a little challenge ahead of us today. Yeah. We, we've got to get our 21-foot seabird off of the easy loader trailer that it's sitting on mm -hmm. in order to get your boat on yeah. to that trailer because I want to take it to the fiberglass shop. But how in the world did you get the T-top off of the boat so that we get it in the studio so quickly? What'd you use? I can't take the credit. We called up Rob King with D-Bond and he came by and actually helped me remove it. Took a couple little sprays of this and it just ate away at the 5200. We weren't peeling up paint or gel coat or fiberglass. It, it made it a breeze. So literally in about five minutes you were able to do something yeah. that normally you're probably uh, lifting up chunks of fiberglass yeah. with the 5200. We weren't scraping at it or anything. It was, it was very simple. Okay, fantastic. Well, what we need to do, Brian, with these jack stands is I want to put a couple of them back behind the stern mm -hmm. Okay, the boat. We're going to raise it. We're going to get it up off the bunks. Brought in Big Red. It's a hoist that I have, special <laughs> for uh, for actually the bow eye, yeah. the lifting ring on, on, on the boat. I want to get it up off the trailer, get the trailer out, mm -hmm. so that eventually we can get your boat, which is on the most rickety trailer I've ever seen. Uh, you bought it two and a half miles from here, and it, the guy said, if you're getting the boat, Brian, you got to take uh, the trailer with it you. Package I, deal. I was following. I'm praying, man. I hope it gets there. Yeah. We've got to get it to our fiberglass shop so we can start in the stringers. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's about 11 miles away. I don't trust it on that trailer. We're gonna rebuild today on the program. We're gonna show you spring replacement. We're gonna get into axles, all kinds of stuff. Yep. But we have one of your friends that's gonna be on the show. We do. What's that all about? Uh, my buddy Sammy, he's got a 300 gallons worth of fuel on his boat and it's an expensive and timely process. So we got a product. To, to go to the fuel dock. Yeah. Right? So we got a product from Lilypad Marine and he's gonna be able to fill up his boat with jerry cans in his backyard faster and cheaper than any Way, other option. He's going to be saving a bunch of money. And, yeah. and guys, we're going to be saving you a lot of hassle by taking you through some of the techniques today with rebuilding this trailer. But where we need to begin, like always, is we have to start off by acknowledging all the fabulous companies in the marine industry who help make ShipShake TV possible. From the start of your outboard until you return to the dock, make sure your boating experience is always fun and enjoyable by remembering that Maintenance Matters, presented by Yamaha. I'm here with the new VF90, which is an excellent option if you're looking to replace an older motor on your boat. Now, if you bought one from a neighbor or you have an older one, there's some things you need to look at. And it's just part of preventative maintenance. And one of those is the oil lines. So Brian Farrell's actually in the shop. Hey Brian, why don't you go ahead and show us the oil lines that come from the oil pump and go to the carburetors. So coming off the oil pump, we have three main oiling lines that go to the cylinders one, two, and three. Now throughout the motor there are also oil recirculation lines that will recirculate motor oil, motor oil from lower cylinders to the top and then it will settle back down to the bottom again. Um, primarily what we're focusing on now is going to be replacing these the, the main three that are coming off of the oil pump. Now when you're looking at these lines, you want to make sure that they're actually nice and soft and supple. As they get older, they can get stiff and actually start to crack, which if it starts to leak oil, it could cause the motor to seize. Now in this case, Brian's going to go ahead and start replacing them one at a time. He's also going to replace the check valves. Make sure that you actually get new check valves, get new Yamaha oil lines, new little special clips. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mock up another oil line. As you can see in these oil lines, there are check valves which allow the flow of oil to go one way through it, but not trickle back towards the pump. Now, one thing that's important, and a lot of guys skip, is they'll go ahead and use zip ties to hold the hose onto these nipples. Now, the issue with the zip tie is, one, you can either not get it tight enough, or two, over time they can dry out and get brittle and fall off, and with that, if you lose a connection, you'll end up losing oil to the cylinder. And that's a possibility of uh, locking your motor up. 
So always use the small little clamps that are available from Yamaha. What I always do is just take a pair of needle nose pliers and grab the two wings. If you squeeze them together, the circumference of the circle will end up opening up and expanding. And with that, you're able to feed a hose through it. And then put the hose on the barbed nipple and then you open it up, slide the clamp over the nipple, release it, and it'll end up holding the hose in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, one by one, replace these lines, that way that I ensure that I've done all of them and I have them routed the same way that they were before. So I'm gonna undo the hose clamp from the top and trace it down to the hose clamp on the oil pump itself, remove that one line, and then install this new line that I just created with the check valve in it. Now, once this is all done, he's gonna bleed the system out and he's gonna run the motor, make sure it's actually working fine. So what I like to do when I'm bleeding the pump uh, is one, I put oil directly into the combustion chamber behind the spark plugs. And two, I also run it on premixed fuel at 50 to one. That way, even for the brief period that these lines have air in them still, you're not gonna cause any damage to the engine with it not getting lubricated. Now, if you're unsure about how to replace these lines, you can either take the motor to your local Yamaha dealership or actually go ahead and pick up a service manual, which will illustrate how to do it. This episode of Ship Shape TV is brought to you by Surehold Industries, helping you keep your boat clean and simple. So John, what we have here is an aluminum easy loader. It's uh, rated for 6,000 pounds and it is uh, gonna carry a boat up to 27 foot. Okay, well welcome back guys. Uh, this is a dual axle trailer. Who we have back on the program, I think it was 20 years ago <laughs> or something like that. And in fact, you were on the program when we, when we got this trailer built, yeah. brand, brand new. Uh, but we have Jeremy Pack back on the program and Jeremy is the, uh, the Southeast sales manager for Easy Loader. And when you look at boat trailer companies, there are a lot of regional ones. Right. I think Easy Loader is one of the only national brands I'm aware of to where literally anywhere in the country there's Easy Loader trailer. We're the only national one that's got 11 locations throughout the United States. Sure, and you know, and the program airs all over the United States. So this is really going to be a topical program for a lot of people. What are the different components that we're going to be rebuilding today? We do not have to trash this trailer like Brian's. That's going to the dump. Okay, that's getting <laughs> cut up and it's going to the dump. Yeah. This can be rebuilt and, and, and this can be functioning again for many, many years. What all are we going to replace? All right, well, first we're going to start up front with the winch. Okay, we're going to replace that with a, a brand new F2 winch. That one's seen better days. Okay. Um, working our way back, we're going to put brand new LED lights, um, you know, marker lights, rear tail lights, how, get the lights how going. How are our cross members holding up? Cross members are okay. Now, okay. the hardware is another story. Okay, so, so we're going to keep the we're going to clean up the cross members, but we're going to actually replace all the hardware there. Okay, our bunks are, are aluminum, right? These yep. are in good shape. They're fine. No problem here. What, what about our chassis? That's, that's what I'm really concerned about. What type of suspension do we have? This is a spring axle, so this uses leaf springs for its suspension. Okay, I have a question for you. Aren't all the leaf springs supposed to be going the same bend? <laughs> yes, This they down are. here looks fractured. Oh, this looks broke. Yeah, it's, it's definitely in need of replacing. So it has four leafs. What, what's this center thing for? That's an equalizer, okay? So that's a spring equalizer. And what, what, what does it do? What that does is it equalizes the weight from the front to the back axle. And it, and it shifts weight so that both axles are, are carrying, carrying that up to 6,000 pounds. That's right. Uh, boat up on top of this thing. So it spreads out the load. So all the weight's just not on one axle. That's correct. Okay. Does it make sense to maybe begin by replacing the chassis first and, um, and you're an expert here. I mean, w w what should we do? Yeah, definitely replace the chassis first. That's, that's our main goal. So what we need to do is we need to jack the trailer up. Okay, so floor okay. jack, bring it floor in, jack. jack it up a little bit. Just like you did with the boat. I, I was yeah. using some keel blocks. Uh, if, if you look down the center line of the, of the Seabird, okay, yeah. you'll see underneath my jack stands, I've got two 
sets of keel blocks, okay, to help support the weight. What if, what if we jack it up and then both sides we use keel blocks again, we can get it up? Absolutely, that'd be perfect. We've got to get rid of these axles, okay, they're gone, they're shot. Um, do we replace, do, do we remove the tires first? Yes, let's get the tires off first. Okay, now this trailer has literally been in and out of salt water a whole bunch of times, okay? It might not be real easy to get those lugs off. If you look at how the axle is kind of coming in, in, in contact with the leaf springs, th there's, it looks like a plate up on top of it. What, what do you call that yeah, plate? It's called an axle plate mounted with U-bolts. Okay, that hardware, I know you came in with, uh, with some lubricant, you came in with you know, like a PB blaster, yeah. you know, something like that, to try to get to where ratchets and sockets can actually get it free. But chances are, chances are it isn't. I'm telling you, this is fused. A lot of guys might try to cut it off with a torch. Right. Okay, I don't have a torch okay. here at the shop yet. Right. Um, I do have cutoff wheels, I have reciprocating saws, I even have a new handheld bandsaw that okay. has been really effective with us doing some of the trailer maintenance and everything else. But I want to talk about what's holding the springs to the frame of the trailer, okay? okay? Because if you look out front, okay, and point that out. Yeah. See, see how that thing is bent? What do you call that? That right there, John, is the spring hanger. Okay. So we're going to have to replace it's those. It's damaged and it needs replaced and we might as well replace all of them while we're at it. All right, well once this chassis is out of our way, we're going to be in really, really good shape. Don't pull the plug. The boats, the tools, and Ship Shape TV will be back in a snap. Wait, don't skip ahead. We've got a free gift for you. Hi, I'm Barry Burhoff, president of Sherhold Industries, and we've been the leader in boat care for over half a century. And today, we want to share our free gift with you, Sherhold's essential boat care guide and checklist. By clicking this link above, you'll discover comprehensive tips from engine maintenance to effortless washing, ensuring your boat stays ship shape. So don't miss out. Download your free Sherhold maintenance guide now so we can help you keep your boat clean and simple. Welcome back. You're watching Ship Shape TV. Boat improvement made easy. We stayed pretty late last night removing the chassis, all that rusty hardware. And again, you know, we were using cutoff <laughs> wheels. We were using sawzalls. Uh, we went through a ton of blades. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it was like every two bolts we had to replace a, a blade on the sawzall. Literally, it took us a lot longer than we thought to remove the chassis, okay? But we cleared the chassis out from underneath the trailer. Yep. And we went ahead and we pre-started working for today. We, we cut all of the hardware from the cross members, okay, over here, and we removed the bunks. And we're gonna be repositioning it in order to get a 20-foot boat on there properly. Right, right? we're gonna swap, swap them around. I think a lot of people are gonna have a question on how do I get the right replacement trailer part for my specific trailer? There's so many different combinations the different weight capacities, the different lengths of trailers, right. uh, different styles of trailers, where do we begin? Well, you're right. There's thousands of different models of trailers. What they have to do is they have to go to their VIN plate, which is located on the front of the trailer, okay. and get their VIN number, which is what we saw earlier. I gave them my VIN number okay, for the trailer. They gave me this back, okay? and this is so cool. This is an actual schematic of my trailer. Okay? Every one has a schematic. You can identify exactly if it's just springs or if it's just a hanger yep. or whatever you need. U-bolts, they've got them, and it's going to ensure that you have the right part for your specific trailer. Well, you know, we've got a lot of assembling to do, and where I wanted to begin is kind of like last time we cut off that chassis. What if we yeah. put the chassis together and we get it back on the trailer? And I want to talk a little bit about previously, you know, in the old days, we would pack our bearings and our hugs with grease. Right. What happens, you know, you're, you're pumping in the grease with the grease gun. What happens if you overload? What happens is the pressure is going to actually push that seal out the back. So you're going to have a blown out seal if you pump too much grease in there. Okay. And if you're driving down the road and, and, and you don't have a seal, you dump the trailer, what happens to the grease? Water's going to come all in, intrude the, the bearings, and you're going to have a major nightmare. It's going to seize up, and then you're going to be stuck on the side of the road. We don't want that. You were talking about with the new hubs that there's a new type of lubricant that you guys are using that is really proved to be effective. We use an oil bath hub now. 
Okay. okay. Well, what kind of oil are we talking about? It's a 90 weight gear oil, so the same oil that you use in your in your lower units okay. you can use in the hub. And how do we monitor how much oil is in our hub? Well, on the end of the on the hub, there's a sight glass, and it gives you an indication of your oil levels. It gives you an indication if there's any water intrusion. So, so nothing has to be removed for you to get a real quick glimpse and to give you an idea, hey, man, I'm fine on oil, everything's good. Absolutely. What if you're looking in the sight glass, it's, it's milky, it's not consistent oil. Right. That's an indication that you've got water intrusion, right? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Do we need to replace this oil and how often do we do it? First find out where, where a leak is coming from. There's only two places. The cap is threaded and it's got an O-ring in there right. and of course your seal in the back. So locate where a breach is at, get that fixed, and then replace the oil. Okay, how much oil are we supposed to put in there? So on the sight glass, there's an indicator, there's a logo. You wanna keep it right at the logo, which is halfway to three quarters. You don't wanna go all the way to the top. The ultimate three-in-one boat hook from Surehold. Engineered to serve multiple purposes, this versatile three-in-one tool can be used as a traditional boat hook for docking and securing your vessel, for carrying a dock line to a pillar or cleat, for safely pushing off a dock space, and more. Compatible with all Surehold handles using the Surelock system, the Surehold boat hook is an essential tool for any successful boating adventure. Surehold, clean and simple. Welcome back. You're tuned into ShipShape TV, America's favorite boat improvement show. Now last summer we were up in Tupper Lake, New York, and we installed a lily pad marine funnel at John's property. And it kind of got me thinking of you, Sammy. <laughs> Everybody, this is Sammy Scalera. Uh, his family owns Stanley Steamer of South Florida. And he's helped me out in the past with cleaning my house, so he kind of came to mind with a product that I think would help him. Now we're fishing buddies, we've gone out before, and I've never once stopped at a marina for fuel with you. <laughs> Have you ever done that? No, sir. All right, so you're a, you know, what's your technique? How do you fill your boat? Well, I carry a lot of gas cans to the backyard and I fill them up five gallons at a time. I mean, when they're charging 450 on the water and $3 on land, I mean, it kind of makes sense, you know, it just it's gives a you a little yeah. something to do during a week to save an extra <laughs> a lot, 150 bucks a lot of for every 100 gallons, you yeah. know? Well, we've got John and, and Corey, the owner of LilyPad, back at the studio, and they're gonna give us a quick run through on a product that I think is really gonna help you out. We're gonna go ahead and give them a listen real quick. I look forward to it. All righty. Well, John, we got that uh, marine funnel installed on Sammy's dock and his parents' dock for their jet skis, and uh, absolutely perfect application for both. You know, Sammy's not uh, unique or anything. Mm -hmm. he, he has a 300 gallon fuel tank. Mm -hmm. A lot of boaters are on a budget. Okay, he's saving a ton of money with the jerry cans, but there are some inherent problems, especially with today's jerry cans that you get at like the home centers and everything. And you know what I'm talking about, guys? Those problems. <laughs> it doesn't vent like it did in the old days, which means yeah. the gas doesn't come out efficiently. Yeah. Um, they have all of this stupid apparatus on. I, I, I can't take it. I mean, I I, I want to go to a farm somewhere and buy something 50 years old and you know do it <laughs> you know do it like you used to. But a lot of people don't have that choice. They, they're kind of stuck there. They want to save the money. There's some problems. A jerry can's heavy. Mm -hmm. what, what does it weigh? Five gallons? It's a 40 pound. How long are you holding it before it's empty? I hold it for 50 seconds with my funnel. Okay, so, so <laughs> maybe, maybe somebody at home should time themselves. How, how long is it taking you to put that five gallons in your boat? And you're saying this will pour as fast as 50 seconds? Yeah. The whole because five you, can, you can take that nozzle off. You're removing that problem. Okay, so, well, what about the weight issue? What, what do you have to solve? Well, the, with, the, with our modular mount bracket, you mount this solid to your dock, right. then the funnel slips into it, and then you can actually just set your can up here and pour it in. So this you're no longer weight. having to hold 40 pounds. Exactly. It's resting there. And it's you're, resting and you're there. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's the screen all about up here? The screen, uh, that prevents the glugging because there's no vents in these cans. Right. So it prevents that glugging, which is splashing fuel. It captures it and sheets it to the bottom so it, it keeps it from splashing out into the water. Tell me a little bit about the hose. Uh, the hose is a fuel rated hose. Uh, we've got a 316 stainless ball valve, which you can use that to meter the flow if you don't want it to flow at 50 seconds. Okay. Um, uh, machined aluminum nozzle, 
fits all the new EPA fuel fills. Okay, the, the, the mount is universal. Yep. It can mount on a round piling and go on a flat. Yep. Uh, how much is the device and where can people get it? Because I'm telling you, <laughs> Sammy was telling me that as a neighbor who has a 50-footer, he does the same thing on yeah. a 50-footer. This is not for small boats, guys. You're going to save a ton of money. Where? LilyPadMarine.com. We put a brand new coupler onto the front of our Easy Loader trailer, and the reason we did that was to kind of streamline a lot of our trailers here in the fleet. This will now accommodate a two inch ball, okay? These are actually uh, some LED lights, and you need to have marker lights within six feet of your tongue. We're well within DOT, kind of speculation here, or regulation. We have a brand new tongue jack, which I love on our winch post. Stand, we have a new winch, okay? And uh, notice that everything is self-enclosed. This cross member, we actually dropped down. When the boats were coming on, this pad was getting crushed. So we have a brand new pad. We dropped the cross member. Jeremy was recommending that we flip-flop the bunks around in order to shorten it to accommodate a smaller boat. And that's what we're going to be doing. We have all new U-bolts, all new hardware. I'm now road legal, okay? I have some new fender wells on this thing. New axles, new springs, a new equalizer, brand new lights, complete makeover, all right? What are we looking at parts-wise with dollars compared to buying a brand new trailer? Yeah, considering the price of a new trailer, what we did saved us about half the cost. You know, Jeremy, your parts not only work on easy loader trailers, we have a different brand trailer for my 19-foot Boston Whaler. One of the bunks literally snapped in half, mm -hmm. and we had to put on a whole new bunk assembly. We used your stuff. Right. Ran me a couple of hundred bucks, we're back on the road. So yeah. this is not just for easy loader trailers. They sell trailer parts, and a lot of this stuff is very, very universal. But we need to thank you. We need to thank also Dave uh, Bentley, yeah. one of your coworkers. Yep. He was helping us out today on the program. We really need to thank Bill, okay, one of the head honchos over to Easy Loader Trailer. Thank, thank you so much, Bill, for helping us out today. Uh, we had Corey Schaub on the program with Lilypad. We had so many experts in the marine industry, but most importantly, Jeremy, we gotta thank everybody at home. Thanks so much for hanging out with us here in the boat shop for the last half hour. I'm John Graviscus, again, Jeremy Pack, and uh, I do have a question about reflective tape. Yeah. What if we maybe put some here behind the logo? Yeah. Maybe some in front of it. Again, you want to be visible at night. Absolutely. Yeah, we could put a good six foot piece on either side. This episode of Shipshape TV has been brought to you by Surehold. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of newly uploaded ShipShape TV episodes.